Um, thanks so much for joining this conversation today. Um, as an overview, I'll be sharing a version of a presentation that I've given, given many times over the past couple of years around the world, but never to audiences connected to the RISD Museum somehow. Um, it's my hope that the objects and topics discussed here will give some solace during this time of overwhelming crisis and brokenness brought about by the devastating COVID-19 pandemic. Titled Repair and Design Futures, Lessons from Mendes textiles, this presentation speaks to research conducted in preparation for the exhibition and multidisciplinary programming initiative, Repair and Design Futures, that was on view here at the RISD Museum from October 2018 through June 2019. This project was fueled by the rich face-to-face -face interactions with art and design students and faculty that I enjoyed at RISD every day until nearly 11 weeks ago when the school closed to prepare for remote learning. While we're scattered across the globe, I hope that we can connect and engage with the topic of repair anew and in ways that will help all of us think, act, and eventually heal. I'd like to start by noting that in the past decade or so, since the 2017 financial crisis, in fact, um, or 2007, sorry, that there's been a notable variety of repair-oriented textile-based works that have featured at design fairs and exhibitions around the world. Here are just a couple of examples. At top is Italian furniture designer Martino Gamper's installation in a state of repair that was presented at La Rinacente department store during the Salone de Mobile design fair in 2014. At bottom is Taiwanese artist Li Mingwei's The Mending Project that he's presented several times since 2009, here shown at the 2017 Venice Biennale. These two interactive conceptual installations are among many in which the theme and aesthetics of repair, as expressed specifically using the language of textiles, have arisen as leitmotifs, or to take it one step further, as calls to action in contemporary art and design culture. A humble act born of necess necessity has become an expression of resistance to our unmaking of the world and our environment. I believe that looking closely at repaired textiles might also offer an alternative that is ethical and sustainable path forward for consumers and designers alike. More recently in early 2018, these issues were underscored by Paola Antonelli, the senior curator of architecture and design at MoMA at the Brainstorm Design Conference in Singapore, where she introduced her Milan Design Triennale exhibition called Broken Nature. Referencing the worsening ice crack in Antarctica pictured at left, she bemoaned the fact that, quote, we have severed so many of our ties with nature, even our own human nature. She closed by suggesting that our future might reside in past practices and that in her exhibition, she also hoped to show the different ways that we can repair the world. Given this increasingly urgent call, underscored of course by the current global pandemic, in the short time that I have your attention today, my aim is to highlight some lessons that worldwide practices of mending might offer today as I reflect on various objects and efforts that have brought the material act of textile repair to the forefront of creative dialogues on the design campus and beyond. Focus will move from historic objects, the maker's hand, and the care taken in the creation and life extension of singular, meaningfully crafted functional objects to overarching concerns of environmental and social repair evident in contemporary design projects and proposals. The celebratory sewn and beaded mend on the Maasai gourd container pictured at right signals its centrality in the life of its maker, owners, and caretakers. It also offers a moment for thinking through how we might work to heal the fissures in our environment and lives while retaining evidence of our history and complicity in the traumas. The repairs to the ruptured seam on the gourd signal efforts made to ensure a secure future by maintaining the gourd that would have been filled with life force. In this case, a yogurt-like like mixture of cow's milk and blood that is a staple food of Maasai herdsmen. In their physicality and proximity to bodily sutures, men's like this illustrate living repair and engage us in rethinking the objects around us that tell stories on a human scale.
In this sense, repair is framed and extolled as both a localized concrete mending practice applied to textiles as a personal and or economic necessity and as something much larger, as a global meta concept serving as a palliative aid to the ills of mass manufacture and consumption and as a way of connecting us in socially engaged contemporary design. If we're feeling overwhelmed by the global industrial scale of what is wrong with the world, thinking through textiles will, I hope, bring us back to the human personal level. On the left is an art installation created for Greenpeace Philippines intended to increase awareness of whales endangered by plastic pollution. And on the right, the American outdoor clothing company Patagonia's cross-country mobile repair truck that was launched to underscore CEO Rose Macario's call for all of us to become radical environmentalists. In her book, Everyday Aesthetics, philosopher Yuriko Saito outlines our dire need to shift our aesthetic paradigm from one favoring perfection, the cutting edge and the brand new, to one stemming from an impulse similar to that which gave rise to wabi-sabi in Japan centuries ago. An aesthetic that fostered appreciation for the transience of objects and by extension, humanity, by celebrating objects that have been well seasoned by use and subsequent repair. The ninth century Korean ceramic bowl at right has been repaired with gold to highlight rather than hide the cracks, a technique that's called kintsugi. And objects such as this Bamaleki palm wine gourd container at left are practical, but also strikingly poetic and powerful, particularly so when we take a moment to focus on the time and effort spent on what might appear to be comparatively luxurious time consuming repairs to a functional object. These musings are meant to, to inspire thought and practice across a range of disciplines, but the crux of my thesis rests in the textile idiom, with th thread presented as an elemental binding unit and sewing as a literal and metaphorical method of suturing, as the connective and restorative tissue linking past to present and future. Material examples of mended and patched garments and textiles, well-used, well-loved, and well-maintained objects have inspired contemporary designers across many fields and continue to speak quite loudly, in fact, to the current generation of design students. In my experience as a curator here at the RISD Museum, introducing such objects to students inspires them to find meaning and beauty in the ravages of time. I've observed that when viewing items in our collection, such as this Japanese laborer's coat called a noragi, students and faculty from a range of disciplines are intimately moved by this garment that's been sensitively patched and repaired over and over again. Made to work and to last, borrow items, a word that literally translates as ragged, show darns that animate them, reveal their labored history, and bind them to us with memory and emotion. Studied at close hand, they motivate us to consider materiality, loss, decay, and that which is worthy of our care and attention. Similarly, items like these Swiss workers' trousers of the 1940s and 18th century women's pockets offer much for contemplation and appreciation in the care that's been afforded them as evidenced by their numerous patches and repairs. As we study them today, they invite us to become archaeologists of sorts as we unearth material value in a world of consumer goods that's most often moving much too fast for the accumulation of deep meaning. Garments like these late 19th century women's shifts and man's shirt, hand woven, worn, repaired, and even remade on an island off the coast of Naples, Italy by Libera Lubrano Lavadera, stand out as cherished pieces that were saved not for their perfection, but rather because they stand for and withstood hard work, agency, and action. They were kept alive and active through their reinforced shoulders and seams, their alterations and their mended holes, reminding us that everything we wear and use is in the process of becoming and is imbued with a living history that if given the chance will continue well beyond their time. 
As this 18th century Dutch darning sampler on the left paired with pages from an early 1900s Pratt Institute student workbook attest, mending and sewing skills have been a part of women's education for hundreds of years well into the 20th century. In these exemplars of hand needlework, neatness and precision were key indicators of skill and eventually the management of the house. Of course, the reality of actual repairs in terms of their relative messiness is quite different from the exactitude of girls' samplers and workbooks. But the repairs, even if visible and scrappy as in the socks here, did their job and were part of every household's repertoire of quotidian activities. Silk hosiery like that on the right even came with mending yarn that would have been quickly employed as needed. Here we see details of a 17th century Indian tent hanging. The tent panels painted in printed cotton have been darned and patched in a variety of ways, all of which are visible reminders of the trials and travels of these pieces from significant use in a royal Indian setting to a dealer's storeroom, then a collector's stash and ending its journey here at our museum. Throughout its life, it's been the subject of several restorers stabs at stabilizing techniques as is clearly evident in the right image. The variety of historical repairs seen in museum collections is a subject in itself, but I'll dwell here for a moment to discuss the unique perspectives of professional conservatives, conservators of textiles and clothing in particular. The mantra of the sensitive conservators in my department is to meet an object where it is in life and in its time. We can't turn back the clock and therefore must recognize and honor the life history of a piece such as the 18th century Portuguese or Spanish silk here that features intensive from a conservation standpoint, though well meant repairs that are really the only things holding it together today. This overwhelmingly darned textile, like its brethren shown already, reveals a visual history of caretaking work by many hands, and it is thus replete with many stories. It shows us a life lived in use, maintenance, and repair. The visible suturing of hide and the objects here suggest attending to an eventual healing of wounds endured. They also reflect a reverence and respect for the natural world by using every bit of the skin evident in the piecing together of various bits of hide scraps to make an object whole again. And as Anishinaabe writer Louise Erdrich has stated, quote, we mend, we women turn things inside out and set things right. Some writers on repair have sought to describe the magical views into the life of visibly mended objects, views opened up by wear, tear, and care by invoking Leonard Cohen's song lyric, there's a crack in everything, that's where the light comes in. A line that itself is inspired by one written by the 13th century Persian poet and mystic Rumi, the wound is the place where the light enters you. When studying these objects in the flesh at close range, our design students have likewise conveyed that their rents and repairs in their imperfection leave openings that allow them to see the humanity of the garment even as it now lies in repose in the museum's collections. The areas of mending provide a way in, they say, an entry point to understanding objects as material and practice and to identifying imperfections as valuable signs of history, time, and embedded emotion. Studying items that show fragility strengthened through repair invites recognition of the labor that went into not only the making of an object, but also its upkeep by sometimes numerous and diverse hands. RISD student makers see in pieces like this Naragi clear and beautiful evidence of ongoingness, of the multiplicity of use and ownership that allow a functional object to breathe and grow in response to new demands. Sharing repaired objects with students and faculty across RISD's fine arts and design divisions has generated conversations touching upon a range of far reaching topics, including sustainability, political ecology and decolonial design among many others, which in turn informed the planning for the exhibition Repair and Design Futures, which some of you may have visited when it was on view this time last year. 
A central question posed by the exhibition was what can historic repair and its variety and often disorderliness teach us about design thinking today? And most important, where might it lead us? In the case of Kuba skirts of raffia with applique designs such as this one here, fragility and brokenness guide the design at its creation and throughout its use. The layout of the design is largely determined by weak and ruptured areas caused by the pounding of the stiff, newly woven fabric to make it soft and pliable for wear. Patches are added on to stabilize holes like the one visible in the right image, with others added to aesthetically balance the design. The paradox of young artists and designers finding inspiration in old, used, broken, and repaired garments and textiles brings to the forefront the question of what it means to be a maker in a world where we already have too much. This is a crucial question that points the way to information scientist Stephen J. Jackson's polemic for what he calls broken world thinking, which he describes as, quote, filling in the moment of hope and fear in which bridges from old worlds to new worlds are built and the continuity of order, value, and meaning gets woven. Jackson's statement is beautifully supported here by an early 19th century cashmere shawl with an inserted repair that itself is composed in, of bits and pieces of other shawls. Here, repair reads as a reorganization, a recontextualization, a way of picking up the broken pieces and making something functional again, but through improvisation and bricolage rather than through professional and systematic skill. The visible repairs to the tunic shown here were made by Fure Keita, an important hunter and community historian storyteller living in Southern Mali. Marking the work and the supernatural energy of the hunt, the men's and the patches here were perceived as increasing the ensemble's power over time. Jackson starts his essay titled Rethinking Repair by calling out the 21st century world as full of risk and uncertainty, growth and decay, fragmentation, dissolution, and breakdown, a dire portrait, but one that he maintains is ripe with opportunity for reconsidering the value of imperfection, the fragmentary, and the incomplete. Here we return to the idea of the crack, the fissure, the wound as providing an opening, an invitation to engage with, tend to, and care for on an individual and personal level, but also in the civic and collective arenas which I see beautifully reflected here in this tunic. In this way, broken world thinking presents breakage as potentially generative and productive, and repair as offering a flexible space for alternative creative solutions to facing ruptures in the fabric of our life. One of my favorite definitions of repair is that provided by Elizabeth Spellman, professor in humanities and philosophy at Smith College. Quote, repair is the creative destruction of brokenness. This is a provocative stance from which to consider the ways that repair might operate within contemporary design practice and ethics, especially when the concept of brokenness is applied to the world as we've made it today. In this respect, repair serves as a way of creatively making something, perhaps even a broken world, functional again by acknowledging use, abuse, accident, and error, by insisting on not forgetting the thing or its history. The examples I've included thus far illustrate the aesthetic and metaphorical power of stitches, sutures, and patchwork, but what can acts of textile mending teach us in regard to design thinking and production for our future? Contemporary designers and artists are increasingly ready to consider this question, especially as awareness rises with regard to the resources required and waste involved in commercial fashion production. The right image here shows a recent workshop put on by Providence's Warp Collective, who presented repair as, re, as a revisioning process. In their words, quote, the act of repairing becomes a visible and meaningful part of the object, poetically transforming and guiding the piece into new artistic terrain. This penultimate slide shows contemporary work by Los Angeles-based designer Christina Kim, whose long incorporated visible repairs as part of her label DOSA's aesthetic and mission for sustainability. 
Kim tells the story of bringing her grandmother's mended socks, which you can see at bottom right, as talismans on her family's move from South Korea to Los Angeles when she was a girl. For 30 years, Kim has worked with women's cooperatives in India and elsewhere in the world to create garments using fabric leftovers and featuring traditional mending techniques. To make the wrap skirt of Remnant Liberty of London fabric, pictured at left, Kim worked with women artisans in Ahmedabad, India. The skirt's dot pattern is inspired by the traditional Indian tikti sewing technique in which the smallest scraps of leftover fabric were used in applique and quilting. Kim's express purpose in engaging with makers employing time-honored skills and traditions such as these is lodged in the fact that the materials they produce will last long, transforming, and as such, melting with the wearer to add many more layers to an already rich history of making and creativity. To conclude, I find it helpful to study the site of repair in itself such as the heel of these socks on the left that were darned by Lisa Morgan, the head of RISD's apparel department. Both for the mender and onlooker, the whole calls for thinking that moves beyond rigid binaries and conservative approaches, as the mindful act of joining jagged edges requires alternative thought processes and techniques involving multi-directional crisscrossing threads to fill the gap. In this sort of mending, a void is bridged by joining threads to forge new pathways to future functionality. And most important, this particular act of material engagement is practiced globally and is open to all. At the macro level, repair is an ethical and ecological commitment, a rejection of mass production and limitless consumption, a validation of undervalued and repressed labor, a reimagined relationship to quality, it's also an embodied act, a way of entering into and understanding objects as material and practice, and it functions as a renewed form of social exchange. It's a creative pursuit open to all of us. Each of us can pick up a needle and engage our smallest muscles for personal and greater good. It's now our turn to inscribe our history, our narrative, our care, and repair. Thank you.